The LEGO Star Wars community became excited to get their hands on new 212 Troopers after last summer's ATTE hit the shelves. Since 2020, it was easy for us to create 501st Legion clone armies, especially with the addition of this year's Battle Pack. But now, the release of the 212 Clone Trooper paper bag has suddenly made building an army of General Kenobi's clones more affordable. My fellow Star Wars nerds and LEGO addicts, I can't wait to show you the clone display I put together and share with you every little detail. This is where the fun begins. Clones! Clones! Hello again, friends. Welcome back to Slimbone's LEGO Star Wars channel. Today, you and I are going to create a display to showcase 199 minifigures. 96 500 First Legion Clone Troopers, led by Captain Rex. 96 212th Legion Clone Troopers, led by Commander Cody. Their respective generals, Obi-Wan Kenobi, with his astromech companion, R4P17, and Anakin Skywalker with his Padawan learner Ahsoka Tano and R2-D2. To create the display, we'll need a base plate that is 48 studs wide and 40 studs deep. Since that doesn't exist, we'll be using 24 6x12 plates and 4 4x12 plates. To hold it all together, we'll be raising the surface of the display by the thickness of one plate to allow for proper tiling and plating to hold the 199 minifigures in place. The 48 stud width will allow for 16 minifigures to stand side by side with the width of two studs in the center for separating both legions. There will be 12 rows of 16 clone troopers in the display. Side by side, there only needs to be one stud between each minifigure. However, there must be two empty studs clearance between each row to allow for backpacks and weapons. Within the LEGO Star Wars community, a popular topic, if not the most popular topic, is clone troopers. This is both a good and bad thing. Good because I also like clone troopers. Bad because when a topic is as popular as this one, Everyone in the community is going to have an opinion about every decision you make. As I've stated before, I only use genuine, unaltered LEGO parts for building. Yes, I'm aware there are many good, and some would say better, custom-made choices for dressing up LEGO clone troopers. However, I'm going to stick to my guns, and probably be crucified in the comment section for some of my choices. Speaking of guns, the following five weapons will be what I'm using to arm both Clone Trooper Legions. The 58247 Short Blaster will represent the DC-15S Blaster Carbine. The DC-15A Blaster Rifle will be the combination of the 57899 Long Blaster and 37762 Candle Utensil. The 62885 medium barrel pistol will represent the DC-17 hand blaster. The DC-15X sniper rifle will be the combination of the 58247 and the 64567 lightsaber hilt. This weapon will be held exclusively by the specialists. Finally, the Z6 Rotary Blaster Cannon will be made up of five pieces between four separate parts. The 4599B Tap, two of the 85861 round plates with open studs, the 87994 3L Bar, and the 6538C Technic 2L Axle Connector. Since this weapon will be held by the heavy troopers, who are already equipped with backpacks, I cannot make it longer or thicker than I'd like to in the tight space of this at-attention style display. When you type LEGO Clone Trooper Army on YouTube, 
you get a lot of results. Some of these armies are enormous, with quantities into the thousands. You'll see them displayed on dozens of base plates, and one of the most remarkable things about them are that the minifigures aren't holding any weapons. What? I have two jobs, and the unfortunate circumstances and added pressures of being a 50-year-old man. Please. If I can take the time to arm my army, shouldn't you? Let's go over the character details of this display. We'll start with Captain Rex. A little over a year ago, I opened 17 of the 75280 sets and posted a video about it on this channel. In that upload, I did cover my version of Rex, but let's quickly go over it one more time. The part list for my Captain Rex is the head from the 2008 version, the helmet from the 2011 version, the torso and armor pauldron from the 2013 version, the 74664 comma cloth in black, the 61190D rangefinder in dark bluish gray, not the new blue one, the arms and legs from the 501st Jet Trooper, black hips, and two of the 62885 medium barrel pistols. Commander Cody is mostly just the latest version, SW1233, except I prefer my Commander Cody holding a DC-15A blaster rifle. Only change I made was to make his arms a little more accurate. Date Night Marge, number SIM029, has the best arms for Cody. Orange on top, white down below. In the past two or three weeks, I came across this idea from another YouTuber. I'd credit him and his channel if I could remember who it was. Gave him a three-piece jetpack, too. Parts used are neck bracket 42446, one-by-one one plate modified with tooth 49668, and the one-by-one one snow trooper backpack tile. Hey, while we're ripping off parts from other minifigures, let's go ahead and give Marge's hands to someone else who could really use them. For Obi-Wan, I got really picky. For me, I really wanted his most accurate Clone Wars look. I picked up SW0197, which has the only torso with the clone armor shoulders and breastplate print. However, the face on that figure is silly. I used the head from SW1227. Since this is a double-sided head, I'm using the more suitable face. This would normally leave the SW1227 minifigure headless, but I have plans for it. If I steal the old man head and cape from SW1046, it makes for the perfect minifigure to be standing outside the ramp of my newly dressed UCS Millennium Falcon. Here's a visual reference. Okay, okay. I'll stay focused. We're using the SW1227 head on the SW0197 torso. But let's ditch the long hair piece and use the Clone Wars one. This minifigure still has boring pants. We'll keep the hips, but steal the legs from a Phase 1 clone trooper, SW0910. This is the best Clone Wars General Kenobi. This year's 75345 501st Battle Pack had some problems. I picked up four of these packs in January, but only recently made the proper changes. 
the officer is an easy fix. We'll ditch his Han Solo blaster for the 62885. Also, a blue rangefinder is never accurate for the 501st Legion. Original dark bluish gray only, please. Let's give him the 74664 comma cloth in black too. For the 212th officer, we'll use the new SW1235, give him an orange rangefinder, a DC-17 hand blaster, a comma cloth in white, and, um, another set of Date Night Marge arms. Because I bought four of them all together. The specialists and heavy troopers need their arms switched. And to create the 212 versions, we're using more SW1235 figures, the extra 3264 macro binoculars from the four battle packs I bought, some orange 61190C visors, and some orange arms I found from this place called Bricklink. We're going to use five more sets of orange arms and use them on five more SW1235 figures. The 501st Legion had several different figure options with different prints to use for the display. Grunts, jet troopers, officers... Specialists, heavies. So to spice up the look of the 212th Division, I'm using a few alternate pieces here and there to make them appear different. I'm digging a little deeper, too. Bought two copies of both 212th Airborne Troopers for the display. The SW0523 figures needed head upgrades, but other than that, these dudes are unchanged for the display. For the 501st, I picked up four of the old SW0439 pilots. They have boring pants, though. I kept their hips, but stole the legs and heads from four unsuspecting SW1094 figures. Now they look amazing. For the 212th, I picked up one additional SW1236 gunner. Between both legions, minus Cody and Rex, these are the 16 different looking clone troopers for this display. And finally, these are the other unaltered minifigures rounding it out. Anakin Skywalker, number SW1083. Ahsoka Tano, number SW0192, R4P17, number SW1221, and R2D2, number SW1202. Last minute addition. For better accuracy, I decided to change out the white 74664 comma cloths to light bluish gray on the three 212th officers. Also added black comma cloths to all 12 heavy troopers. If you made it this far, thank you for suffering through the incredibly specific details of this display. Give me a like if you feel it's deserved, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I had a blast assembling the minifigures for each legion, and enjoyed the heck out of making this video. Honestly, it's been almost a year in the making. At least in my head. See you next time from Slim Bones Lego Star Wars Channel. <laughs> Star Wars! Star Wars! Good job.